Photography has become a victim of its own success. We can pick up a smartphone and take a perfect picture. Or can we? Now, I use one myself, but I use it for social occasions, and that should not present a problem. But there are subjects, and quite a few, where a photographic knowledge and expertise are vital. When I point this out, I am informed in a high-minded fashion that a smartphone introduces us into the world of photography. I agree, but I wonder how many get beyond this introduction, especially when they are under the mistaken impression that a real camera, yes, it does everything for me. This becomes clear when we want to photograph a subject that is more challenging, and if our expectations are not fulfilled, what do we blame? Of course, the camera. So what are these challenging subjects? For example, when using a telephoto lens, prime or zoom, the images can end up unsharp or underexposed. Because of increased magnification, camera shape becomes a problem when hand-holding if the shutter speed is too long. However, if a faster shutter speed is used, the image can also end up underexposed, because the widest aperture on a variable aperture zoom may not be wide enough to allow sufficient light to reach the sensor. These problems are resolved by photographers who understand photography. Shutter speeds and apertures do more for the photograph than correct exposure. Selective choice of a shutter speed can also control movement, rendering it frozen or blurred. Auto won't do this because the camera doesn't know what is being photographed, and whilst a scene mode preset might freeze movement, to blur movement, such as water, you have to tell the camera what to do, because it can be very creative. This technique is not without problems. When increasing a shutter speed, the amount of light reaching the sensor is also increased, and if you are not careful, the photographer can end up with a grossly overexposed image, because the camera is unable to compensate with a small aperture. To reduce the light externally, you either reduce the ISO, use a neutral density filter, or choose a dull day, and when everything is right and hunky-dory, it is likely that you will end up with camera shake. Oh dear! So can a smartphone do this? Uh, well, let's look at something else, shall we? Say apertures, which control depth of field, a technique lost on photographers weirded to auto. Whatever the camera focuses on, a certain amount of the image in front and behind remains sharp, beyond which it becomes unsharp. This is depth of field. The area of sharpness is variable and controlled by aperture and lens choice, and the photographer has complete creative control. A landscape will look at its best if everything is sharp, but a flower against a distracting background will look better if only the shrub is sharp. It is unlikely that a smartphone will do this, as everything will end up sharp, but its software may be able to give a similar effect. Further photographic challenges related to camera shake are encountered in low light, such as inside a building when flash cannot be used or is ineffective. The camera has to use not only the widest aperture available, but also a longer shutter speed, risking camera shake when handheld. 
If on auto, the camera will increase the ISO value automatically, making the sensor more responsive to the low level of light. This unfortunately can reduce image quality, causing a distortion known as noise, similar to grain when using a film emulsion having a high ISO. Now, purists will use a tripod to avoid camera shake, allowing them to use a much longer shutter speed. However, many of the latest cameras now have image stabilizers, allowing the photographer to handhold at shutter speeds without increasing the ISO thought impossible a few years ago. Very useful if a church or stately home doesn't allow tripods. These techniques offer just a hint of what is possible in real photography. I haven't mentioned computers and software, now considered essential to put back what a camera cannot do at the time of photography. Today, when implementing advanced techniques, we can achieve what was considered impossible possible in the days of film, glorious as those days were. Now proceed to my YouTube homepage and you will discover many programs describing in greater detail how to turn your snaps into photographs, as well as suggestions for places to visit and reviews of equipment.